Alright everybody, just an update. It's going to be a two-part. I'm going to go in depth on the cup, what I've got done to the cup racer after this video. Um, just thought I'd like to show you a couple updates that I did. This was the original strut bar that I made. It looked alright. And then now, open this up, I used two eyelets and a piece of brass tubing to make the new strut bar. Here's a better shot of the motor. You can see it outside and look good out there. I think it turned out pretty good. Like I said, this is just an update. Um, Recarbon fibered the hood. Uh, it was all banged up and chewed up. Um, new stickers. They're all white this time, not multicolor. And of course, the hood, fake hood pins. It's a sticker. Um, also, let's move this out of the way. Oops. Here's the homemade intercooler. Just made out of aluminum. Had to add this piece of brass on because it didn't make the tab long enough after I glued it in place. It wasn't very smart on my move. Um, two intake tubes are just heat shrink, doubled up, and then painted red. Um, just thought you'd like to see that. I've got another part of this video. Um, it'll be here in just a second. Um, it's going to be an in-depth on the cup race of what I've done to it, what I've got in it, and hopefully you guys like it. Tell me what you think and stay tuned. Alright everybody, that's the second part of this video. I'm just including it in one part, one whole video. Um, couple questions, couple and uh, reviews on the cup racer, what I've got in it, how I like the car. To be honest with you, I love the car. Thing is, really responsive. Um, let's get started. Um, you guys all pretty much have the same setup right here. You have a hub and your standard wheel wheel adapter which has got that little annoying pin that everybody drops. I know I've done it. Don't be afraid to admit it. It sucks. I was at a race one time and went to take the wheel off, can't remember for what reason now, and that happened. I don't like it when that happens, and plus I didn't have an extra pins in the box, and didn't think to ask anybody because they, all the people that I ran with were actual racers, and you know how that is, you ask, ask for a little pin, and gee, they don't have any, or your hobby shop you ask your hobby shop, you run in there real quick and say, hey, I need a pin for this. And they go, well, we don't have any pins. And you go, well, can I get another pin from another car? And that always works. Luckily, I did that. And I was able to finish the race. But it's just annoying that you lose this pin and you're done. If you're out in the field, you no longer are able to run because you didn't bring your tools or this and that. But HPI has decided to come up with a new idea for the cup racer. Oh, pin just fell out. That doesn't happen. That's uh, let me get it in there. That just holds the axle in place, and that's covered by a bearing. I'm glad that kind of happened, so I could tell you that it's covered by the bearing, so that pin will never come out. But uh, HPI has come up with this uh, tooth design. I believe it's on the E10 too. The nice thing is the bearing is holds this in place so you don't have to worry about it falling off. I mean once it's on there, it's on there. I mean you have to pull it to get it to come off. It goes on pretty easily, comes off really hard. And of course the simulated discs. Um, as you can see, it yeah, did it again. Oh well we'll leave it out. That way we can get a better shot of this cup. This is a fully aluminum cup um, versus the stock plastic one. They are exactly the same, but of course, this one's aluminum, this one's plastic. Couldn't turn the power up with these plastic ones, was afraid it was going to break them. And we'll get into that later, but that's that. Um, 
put this off to the side. Nice thing is, is those are held in with the same pins that hold the standard hub hub pin, which, like I said, it never falls out because it's held in with the bearing. Um, then we got the stock plastic shocks, plastic shock bodies. Um, see if I can get this to do it. They just snap on, they don't screw on. They have a little o-ring in here and every time I go to run the car I've got shock oil all over the car. And of course if you've done it, I've done it before, um, you strip the threads off the shock body when you go to put new shock oil in it because they include aluminum caps with the cup racer. Or in some cars don't, some cars do. Nice thing with the plastic caps is they kind of have a give, the aluminum ones don't. But they leaked and I didn't like them. So of course I did the upgrade and we'll go to that. Get this out of the way. Here are the GPM aluminum threaded shock bodies. You can get the actual HPI ones. I just wanted to get these because they were a little cheaper. And you really don't notice the difference. I I've seen the actual shock bodies in person and they're no different than these except the ones that for HPI have a gray kind of an aluminum. These have kind of a silvery aluminum. Um, running the blue springs up front, which are one step harder than the gold, and the rose springs in the rear, well they're pink. They can call it whatever they want, they are pink. The pink shocks in the rear. Um, before I was running in the car with the plastic shock bodies, this low C 20 weight oil. I was getting a lot of preload, so went to the low C 50 weight shock oil. Now, I'm new to this drifting thing, so if you got any ideas, you know, maybe I can correct the preload and use a lighter shock oil, be glad to help me. Of course, I've got it drifting where it runs perfect. I don't want to mess with it. So, um, as here, better shot. That was a brake rotor with a caliper. This is the kit you can buy for this car. Um, the GPM, aluminum upgrade, uh, hubs, both front and rear. They accept all the factory, factory parts. The nice thing is they come with a set screw which is in there, thank God. It didn't look like it was in there. Comes with a set screw and the toe change in the rear. Um, got to go on to the next thing here. Um, got a easy one brushless combo, a 35 amp ESC and a nine turn 4300 kilovolt motor or KV, however you want to say it. Um, and switched it over to the Dean's plug had that nasty Tamiya plug on there, which I ran there for a while, but didn't like it. Don't like the Tamiya plug that much anymore. Um, but yeah, it works. Does the job there for a while, but once you start burning plugs up, it's kind of annoying. Um, a better shot of the motor. And of course, I've got my accent colors, the blue, right here and right here, just to give it a little bit more look. Um, I'm running a Spectrum DX3E, it's a SR300 receiver, 2.4 gigahertz, with the uh, voltage stabilizer cap. Uh, I was getting some weird jerks around when I nailed the throttle, and it would kind of take off, but it would hesitate. So I put this cap on there. It straightened it all out. Um, it comes with an S200 servo which is just a plastic geared standard digital servo. I'm set that off to the side. Uh, here's your radio, your transmitter, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a nice radio. Doesn't feel cheap. Of course, it's a Spectrum. That's why it doesn't feel cheap. It looks cheap. I think they could have done a better job, but I can't complain too much. It's a nice radio. Um, of course, you got your bind and your reversing. What I like about this is the third channel, you can do a two position, a three position, and a linear. I don't have a battery charged up right now or else I'd show you. Because this, the auxiliary is running my, uh, 
the auxiliary is running my third channel servos for the headlights turn them on and off and when I do flip ups they'll turn on and off they'll come up and down but the linear you can kind of bring it in gradually and it'll come up nice and slow you can hold it down and it'll come up or you can click it and it'll go in one one tooth intervals which is nice um, you're steering left and right if you do a lot of oval racing um, you can turn the right steer down a little bit and the left all the way up which will get you the corner a little better you got your throttle forward and throttle brake for the nitro mine are just pegged because don't need it don't need them on and the auxiliary you can change the height and the boot not the height the throw and how fat how much you want it I can't remember exactly what it is um, go on the website it'll show you um, just painted the face of the wheel give it a little bit of a better look but that's it for now if you guys have any questions on the cup racer if, if I didn't cover anything that you need to know uh, just tell me what you need to know and I will be glad to help you um, thank you again have fun enjoy the hobby see you guys later